Hello everyone, today we're going to take a look on how we can create amazing animations like this in Enscape. Even if you're a total beginner, as well as if you have some experience with Enscape, you will find plenty of helpful tips in this video, so make sure to watch all the way through the end. Firstly, we will take a look on the user interface of the animation section. The first options you will find is to save the paths or load previous ones, which is quite useful when you don't want to create the same path over and over again. Next up, you can choose to turn on the grid lines in case you need help with composition with the rule of thirds. I personally rarely use this option, but if you find it helpful, I suggest that you do so. Then you have a timeline duration, which will become active after we add keyframes. This basically shows the length of the total animation that we have created. The other options are the movement options, which are the ease in and out option, which slows down the camera movement in the beginning and in the end of the keyframe. And also we have the shaky camera effect, which almost makes it look like the camera is in someone's hands. And then down here is the timeline section, which is the most important one of them all, or at least the one that we will be using the most. So next up, we'll go through on how the keyframes work. So here at the plus icon, you can add a frame in the beginning of the animation. And at the other plus icon, you can add a frame at the end of the animation. We move the camera from the original position in the second keyframe, that way we create movement. And to add keyframes, as I said, you can either press the K key or the plus icon. I would like to use the K key as well because it's just faster and is just the shortcut. So basically what you've done here with these keyframes is that you've added a point A and a point B. And basically this tracks down all the movement that it takes to move from point A to point B with a camera. The default time that Anscape set up the movement to happen is in this amount of seconds, but we can change it here at the timeline duration. If we exit the keyframe and take a look at the cameras, you can see the path that the cameras take. If you want to check if the path is correct for you, you can easily click the play button right here and you can check the movement that the camera takes and it's basically like a little preview of the path. It's not a full rendered animation, but it still works fine to see if everything is going correct in the process of creating the animation. Let's say you want to create a curvier path on the video. The easiest way to do that is to exit the keyframe once again and hover the mouse anywhere on the path. Once you hover your mouse on top of the path, you can easily click anywhere to create a new keyframe in that position. So after we clicked it, we can move the new camera backwards a little bit and to apply these changes, we just need to update our keyframe. And now if you want to preview, you can see that the path is much curvier and not in a straight line direction. You can also add a new keyframe in the timeline. So right here between this keyframe and this keyframe, you can see a plus icon. So what this does is that it adds a new camera position in between the two cameras. Make sure you're looking at the right direction of the animation since the plus icon will save the camera that way that you're looking when you press it. Timestamps are a way of changing the time it takes for the camera to travel from one keyframe to another. So to edit our timestamp, we click on one of the frames and we can check the timestamp box after which you can change the time when the frame appears. All the changes in the timestamps are related to the first frame. So if we make the timestamp for the third frame at 6 seconds, that means that the camera will arrive at this frame 6 seconds after the animation has started in the first frame. The next tip is to create a time-lapse animation in Enscape. But before we do so, please make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the like button, that way I will upload a lot more videos sharing helpful tips on Enscape. Through the keyframes overrides panel, something else that we can achieve is a time-lapse effect, which is especially useful for exterior scenes. To do this, we click the first keyframe and we change the time of frame at 9am. And we will leave the time frame at 4pm for the second keyframe. As you can see in the exported animation that I did of these keyframes, the sun is moving and it gives it a quite cool cinematic look with the shadows moving and the mood of the video changing. A lot of videography tips can also be helpful on creating animations, so that's why this brings us to the sponsor of this video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for anyone who loves learning and wants to explore the creativity and learn new skills. I myself joined Skillshare because I am looking more into videography and composition where I am taking the Videography for Beginners course by Randy Allen. 
I believe the course will improve my presentation skills and animation since a lot of the tips are applicable in the ArcViz world as well. It is also a great place to improve other areas like illustration, graphic design, freelancing and any other type of creative outlet that you think can complement architecture or any of your hobbies. Skillshare is ad free so you won't need to have any distraction while you're exploring new skills. New premium classes are launched every week, so there's always something new to discover and the entire catalog is available with subtitles in Spanish, French, Portuguese and German. The first 1000 people who use the link in my description box or my code SCALE will get a 1 month free trial of Skillshare. Thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video and now let's move on to our animation. Next up, we will take a look at the focal point option. If you want to use the focal point option, we will need to turn on the depth of field in the visual settings. We will also uncheck the out of focus box since it will give us more control over what areas we want blurred. Now we turn on the focal point slider and as you can see the white line which moves when we move the slider is the indicator of where our camera is focusing on. For the first keyframe we will focus on the accessories on the table and on the second keyframe we will move the focal point to the furniture in the back. As you can see the final export of these keyframes this is quite useful especially when you want to show details of your project. Watch the video all the way here on to thank you very much and as thanking gesture I will give you some advanced tips on animation in Enscape. The first advanced tip I want to share with you is the wind effect and this is mostly applicable in exterior animations. If you want your vegetation to have movement throughout the animation, we can do that simply by going on the visual settings menu, clicking on the atmosphere and changing the wind intensity and the direction angle. As you can see in the final export, the vegetation is moving and I believe this gives the video a little more live movement and it just gives it a better mood overall. Another effect that you might see often in our quiz animation and that I get a lot of questions on how to achieve daily on YouTube comments and my social media is the lights turning on in certain shots. So to do this is quite easily actually. You export the same path twice and the first path is with the lights turned off and the second one will the lights turn on or vice versa, it doesn't matter. And after that, on whatever video editor you use, you can add a fade transition effect and that should do the job just right for you. All right, so we have come to the end of this video and thank you very much for watching all the way to the end and make sure you check out my Patreon, comment if you have any questions and I will see you on the next one.